So we're just over a week away from another unlocking with unlocking icons, Kino Isaac via my Patreon channel. I haven't decided who the next feature will be, um, but I will promote it as soon as I make that decision this week. Now, on today's episode, I am going to circle back to unlocking Whitney Houston, and I'm going to touch on chapter three on a very specific critical topic, which is addiction. For those of you who know Whitney Houston's life really well, and I don't see there being like a high number of independent artist labels or the general public that don't, um, you would know that the cause of her death was due to substance abuse and of course all the struggles that she had um, within the 90s after marrying Bobby Brown in 1992 and all they went through as a couple when it came to addiction. And I'm going to share points with all you guys out there, independent artist labels or anyone in general who is currently at the moment addicted to any form of uh, substance. And we can't just like pin down substance abuse to just alcohol or drugs. They can be prescribed drugs as well. Like I've mentioned to guys on the show before about how I should suffer with anxiety and I should take certain pills for anxiety. It was legal pills. Um, and I overcame that using certain meditative prayer methods and also finding the willpower to myself. But of course, even though I left that, you know, there's certain things that I consume more than I should actually such as Bioplus, which is, look, it's a legal product. Um, but, you know, I shouldn't consume it as much or be dependent on it. Um, so I'm going to touch on how us as independent artists, independent labels can actually overcome substance abuse. And you could be an independent label as well that has artists under them, has a team or partnerships, and you know that, you know, there's an artist that's working with you that's currently at the moment suffering with addiction. So I'm going to share points with you guys on how you can uh, coach them or actually practices that you can implement in your own life if you are suffering with addiction. So we're going to touch on that in a bit. But first up, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the top five trends that's been happening in the music industry over the last week. Um, credit and report to music business worldwide. Before I tap in to this. There is some exciting things coming to the Kino Isaac podcast starting next month. Um, it'll be just after halfway through next month. Um, the first episode is scheduled for the 20th of July. Um, you know, this just goes back to consistency, man. Like, you know, the power of consistency. Like, you know, the Kino Isaac podcast started off in 2021. And at the time, and moving into 2022, the podcast was so diverse. Like, I touched on so many topics. And towards the end of 2022, start of 2023, I decided to just stay within the entertainment game. The podcast must just complement what I do and the industry that I love. And the journey, 2021, 2022, 2023, and now into 2024, like, I've just been so consistent. I never give a fuck about vanity metrics. Um, if you listened or not, it was cool. I still came back the week after and I still pushed out a new podcast. I ended up getting rated on Feedspot as the number one. Okay, first as the number three um, South African Entrepreneur Podcast. And now I'm still sitting at number one. And I shared with you guys a couple months ago on what you actually really rated on online. And consistency is one of it. Like if I don't show up each week to push out a new podcast and I let it slide for like say two to three days and this does happen, I will like drop to number two or to number three. And then I come back, you know, the next two weeks after that and I'm consistent with the next two weeks after that and I'm back to number one, the power of consistency. Well, the power of consistency has now led me. And look, um, in 2021, I did have two guests that came in. I had... um. Gareth, who was one of my IT business partners at the time. I had Richard, who should work with me at uh, the time. It was PMG Media. You know, he should do all of our graphic works and, you know, other tasks, other tasks related to design within Posh Magosh. And that was it as far as guests were concerned till now. And I've just been doing it solo, solo, solo. And a few weeks ago, I got hit up by an agency based in the States. 
who actually sources guests for podcasts. And they hit me up and like, okay, would I be willing to market my podcast with them? They'll send it out to um, a list of people. They'll promote it. And if people think that, okay, the Kinoise podcast is interesting and we want to be a guest on it to share a story, you know, they will hit me up with the list. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, this sounds awesome. Sent them all the details, did the sign up, um, approved all the terms and conditions, which was mainly just one where it says, okay, that myself, Kino Isaac, will not charge any of the guests to appear on the podcast. So anyway, the newsletter gets sent out via the agency. And I've got like quite a few, like, I mean, I'm talking about like maybe like 20 names already on the list. Uh, musicians out there I'm not even just musicians like as in singers and songwriters but I've got authors I've got someone who has a background with Jewish music and all these people want to be featured on the Kino's Boss and it's so so dope so I'll schedule the first um, I guess interview slash chat for the 20th of July and the reason I'm actually waiting uh, nearly a month to actually launch this new era of the Kira's podcast where it's going to be like, you know, audio as well as we have been doing where it's on Spotify and so on. But now there's also going to be a video side to Kino as a podcast. Now I know video podcasting is not something new. It's fresh, but it's not new. But I guess for me, it's just like, you know, doing things in the perfect time in its season that it's meant to actually get done. I was meant to be just solo on the podcast like this each and every single week with just audio uh, for a good period of time. And now God, the universe, um, my ancestors have now granted me this opportunity based on you know, the consistency and of course prayer, you know, of growth um, with the side of what I actually do. So in the next month i am revamping my studio i am preparing for this it's going to be totally dope and i mean there is already a youtube channel for the kino as a consulting agency i'm not really in to youtube so much but you know i'm going to be utilizing youtube with these uh with these chats with these interviews and it's going to be dope and the first artist um i'm not going to mention any names yet but it has been approved she has accepted she's based in the states and this is just going to be so, so awesome. Am I overwhelmed? Yes, I am. Even though I'm not shy, I'm good at video. I'm good at coming on the podcast and speaking openly. I'm good at speaking on stage. I'm good at speaking in front of an audience. It's it's a new era, it's something new to me. And um, it's not that, you know, at times when we do something new, we always tend to say like, I can't. It's not because we can't, it's because it's something new and we just need to get used to it. So I'm preparing myself uh, for this and look, man, it's going to be dope. And this is just going to be like another compliment added to um, the educational, the free educational um, sector component of the Kino as a consulting agency. You know, we've got the audio podcast, we've got Unlocking the Icons, and now we're going to have the video podcast interviews with guests um, within the industry coming on and just sharing their story, their life, their history, and of course, sharing valuable lessons with all of you guys out there to get to the same level of success that they are at and what they can actually provide to you, what you can learn from them to process, to proceed forward with your own career. So that's going to be awesome. This new era of the Kino as a podcast launching next month. So stay updated on my social media platforms for that. And of course, as I move on, so of course, I'm the type of person, and this is the same thing I do with the Kino Isaac show. So if I got the ball figured out, 20 people who have reached out to me uh, via this agency who want to be a guest on the Kino Isaac podcast, I am going to go through each guest. I'm not picky. I don't do what uh, bulk of, uh, let's just say, podcasters or radio stations or whoever do. And be like, okay, this is a fit, that's a fit, nah, no. Or like when you submit a mix to a traditional radio station, like, okay, no, this mix is good, that's bad, we're going to go with this, not this. Everyone on that list is going to get an opportunity to come onto the Kino as a podcast. And as I walk through that list also, I'm also going to start now reaching out to people also within South Africa just to come on, be a guest, and just get all the independent artists 
uh, on this momentum as well. So yeah, exciting times. Um, and I'm just so, so grateful for this evolution. So to all you guys out there once again, never underestimate the power of consistency. Consistency. Show up each day, show up each week, show up each month, show up each year. Even if you're not getting anything solid back in return yet, be consistent. The more consistent you are, the more people out there will actually take you serious and it works. Trust me, it works. So just have faith in consistency. So off to music business worldwide. First up on the list, which is something that's been in the pipeline for a very long time. Not very long time, but some time. Uh, the Queen catalog to be acquired by Sony Music and $1.27 billion deal. I've mentioned this before and goes on to say that according to Hits, which reported on Wednesday, June 19, citing sources that Sony Music has emerged as the winning buyer for Queen's recording and publishing rights. Number two, TikTok is forming an investment team to acquire music content and companies. Once again, goes back to something I mentioned a few times about um, how independent artists and labels should actually start investing, even if it's a small amount in catalogs, um, music rights. It's just such an important component for the financial growth um, of your career. You know, when you compare this to the standard like stock exchanges around the world. Um, music is one consistent, should we call it, um, word I'm looking for. Um, such a popular word when it comes like commodity. So, I can't think of the word right now, but around it because it's something consistent and something that's always going to get streamed. Um, knowing the difference as well between investing in publishing or investing in the masters is also important. Um, it's like some of the investments that I've made as well. It's um, master rights or it's publishing rights. Back to the episode I did that differentiates the boat. So if I invest in a catalog that uh, gives me um, access and ownership of publishing rights, that means I have rights to all the underlining um, music, the sheet music. So if the, any one of the tracks is performed live or it's on radio or it's um, digital performance royalties such as um, another important platform, um, Cyrus, Cyrus, uh, then of course, you know, you generate those royalties. Now, Masters of Recording is at each time a track is actually streamed, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, so on, then of course I get royalties from there. So know the difference also before you invest. Um, very, very important to know the difference. Number three, TikTok parent by dance to spend $2.1 billion to develop AI hub in Malaysia. Um, even though I am not on TikTok, um, it's becoming quite a dominant force within the music industry. Number four, Emra has invested more than $50 million in its tech to date, the most of it spent in the past three years. Not really going to tap into that. You're more than welcome to go check it out. Number five on the list, what will happen if Spotify starts charging a modest fee for its ad funded tier or shut it down entirely? So I touched on this uh, topic about two, two, three weeks ago. The episode is still live and I give you guys the advantages and disadvantages if Spotify has to do this and I give the advantages and disadvantages uh, for independent artists labels if Spotify had to say, okay, we are going to charge for the free tier. I am I'm against it personally. I don't see it being a great move for these platforms. And the advantages and disadvantages between Spotify, the independent artist, and independent label are quite similar. You know, one pro for both for all parties involved would be like, okay, there'll be like more royalties for us that will be generated. 
um, the, the, the common disadvantage is people would be like, okay, you know, and I'm not going to pay for free tier, and then you're going to have like millions of people saying, out at Spotify, and I'm just going to jump ship um, to another platform. So completely against it. So if you want to know more about this and my thoughts, my opinions on it, and those advantages and disadvantages, please check out that episode. Okay, so on to unlocking uh, Whitney Houston, Chapter 3, as I mentioned at the start, and touching on the subject of addiction. So within Unlocking the Icons, I mentioned that Whitney Houston married Bobby Brown in 1982. <laughs> and I mentioned that the quality of her music and performances began to decline in the late 90s. Um, as she battled with substance abuse, battled with addiction, she attempted many comebacks, including the album I Look to You in 2009, but she still continued to struggle with personal um, demons. And um, tragically, she passed away on February 11, 2012, at the age of 48, from an accidental drowning in a Beverly Hills hotel bathtub. A death was attributed to a combination of drug use and heart disease. So I'm going to share lessons with all of you guys out there. Um, as independent artists, if you're struggling with addiction and what you can learn to prioritize your well-being or the well-being of your team, as I said at the start, if you're running your own independent label, to protect your career, their career. And the thing is, if you are not suffering with substance abuse as a label owner, but your artist is or any member of your team is, it sort of affects your career as well. So this will also be used so you can actually coach um, your, your team, your artist, to avoid a tragic fate like Whitney Houston. So first up is self-awareness and acceptance. Point one. Acknowledge the problem. The first step is admitting that you have a problem. Ignoring or downplaying addiction will only make it worse. Point two is seek professional help. Addiction is a disease and, and professional help is crucial for recovery. Therapists, addiction specialists, and support groups can provide guidance and tools for overcoming addiction. Now look at the Kino as a consulting agency. I sort of carry many unqualified hats and when i say unqualified yes i don't have a certificate to prove okay look i'm qualified to actually be your therapist or specialist but i via watching videos educational content via reading um can actually give you solid advice you know on what to do like i love psychology i love entertainment law and if i never recognize my passion at a young age and you know knowing for myself that look going to university for five six years is not for me i was not going to do that i would have been like probably one of the two so i'm extremely um into the subject of psychology it's like the starting point you know in anyone's life anyone's career and this is coming from personal experience again um if i never focus on psychology first in my own personal life I wouldn't be here today on the podcast it's a starting point no matter how talented you may be you may be a great vocalist a great songwriter but if you don't actually work on improving yourself first because I mean, keep in mind you are the CEO of your life I am the CEO of Kino Isaac so I gotta take care of Kino Isaac in the best possible way so seek professional help even if it's coming to me even if it's coming to the agency um say you don't want to spend like, well, you don't have like a lot of money to spend on going to like a therapist week after week and you're not finding the solution because they can also like chance it and just keep it going, going, going on the road, uh, getting you medicating or prescribed drugs that really doesn't fix the root of the issue. You know, you want to come down, have a sit with me. I don't care if it takes one hour, two hours, three hours, just so you can explain to me, you know, what's going on and talk about your addiction and your issues and we work through it together. More than welcome. So never be ashamed of seeking professional help. The next one is prioritizing health and well wellness. 
Point one is self-care is essential. Focus on healthy habits like proper sleep, exercise, and a balanced diet. These practices will help improve your physical and mental well-being, making it easier to resist addiction. Point two, um, under prioritizing wealth and wellness, is creative outlets. Channel your energy into music creation. Use songwriting or music production as a healthy outlet to express your emotions and cope with challenges. The next point is building a strong support system. Number one is surround yourself with positive people. Distance yourself from negative influences who enable your addiction. Seek out support of friends, family, mentors, or fellow artists to understand your struggles and encourage your recovery. So, personal story for me. Um, Way back in the day, you know, like I had a lot of friends. Um, And addiction in certain substances was like a norm. It was like a weekly thing. And one day I just realized for myself, like, nah, the surroundings is just not for me. And I made the call to actually step away from all of my friends at the time because I just couldn't go down the road. The more I stayed around my friends at the time, the more I was doing things that just wasn't healthy for myself and for my own personal growth, um, such as partying often, more often than I should. Um, you know, certain drugs played a role. Alcohol played a role and it was just like, nah, this is not for me and I stepped away. So never be scared or ashamed to step away and just go down your own solo part. Make that move for yourself. And if you're struggling to do so, once again, please do hit me up. If I can do it, so can you. <clears throat> the next point is industry professionals who care. Look for industry professionals who prioritize artists' well-being. Having a support system within the industry can be invaluable. Once again, myself, the Kinoise Consulting Agency. The next point is protecting your career. First one is honesty and transparency. If you feel comfortable, consider being open about your struggles with trusted colleagues or mentors. The understanding can help you navigate the industry while focusing on recovery. Number two, focus on building a sustainable career. Don't let short-term financial pressures push you into unhealthy decisions. Focus on building a long-term career through responsible music creation and fan engagement. Remember, recovery is a journey. Relapses are possible. Be kind to yourself. Seek support when you stumble and maintain your commitment to recovery. There is hope. Many artists have successfully overcome addiction and built thriving careers. You can too. Now I'm going to share with you organic steps that you can take for your career that you can implement in your daily routine uh, that will be beneficial for overcoming addiction, anxiety, and depression. Structure and routine. One, create a schedule. Establish a consistent sleep schedule, meal times, and dedicate specific times for creative work, exercise, and relaxation. The structure provides a sense of control and predictability, reducing stress and promoting well-being. Number two, the power, the power of habit. Healthy habits take time to solidify, so be patient. Over time, these practices become ingrained, making them easier to maintain and reducing the urge to turn to unhealthy coping. Um, mechanisms. The next point, connecting with nature. Number one, nature walks and mindfulness. Spending time in nature has a calming effect. Regular walks in the park, hike in the woods, or simply sitting by a window can reduce stress, improve mood, and enhance focus. Number two, mindfulness in nature. Combine nature walks with mindful mindfulness practices like focusing on your senses, appreciating the beauty around you and being present in the moment. This can be deeply grounding and reduce anxiety. The next point, sleep, reflection, and meditation. Sleep hygiene. Prioritize good sleep hygiene. Go to bed and wake up at consistent times. Create a relax, relaxing bedtime routine and avoid screens for at least an hour before sleep. 
Adequate sleep is crucial for mental and physical health, and poor sleep can worsen anxiety and depression. Number that would be, yeah, number two on the sleep reflection and meditation. Journaling and reflection. Dedicate time for journaling or reflection. Write down your thoughts and feelings, set goals and track your progress. This allows you to process your emotions and identify triggers for unhealthy behaviors. Last point, meditation and prayer. Meditation practices like deep breathing exercises or mindfulness meditation can reduce stress and improve focus. Prayer or spiritual practices can also provide comfort and a sense of purpose. Goes back to the episode I did on spiritual capital. Please remember, number one, tailored approach. These are just suggestions. Experiment, experiment and find what best works for you. It's like when I read these books, you know, from great authors such as Robin Sharma, um, and Dave got this blueprint, and he's explaining this blueprint, how to go about it. But what he always mentions in there is you just need to find like what works for you. It's like the 5 a.m. club, brilliant book to read. You know, if you want to wake up at 5 a.m., the entire week, seven days, we just want to do five days. It's up to you. Do what works for you, but you at least need to do it five times a week. Combination is key. The most effective approach often involves a combination of these organic methods, professional help, and possible medi medication if prescribed by a doctor. But do your best to stay away from prescribed or uns prescribed medication. Seek support. Don't hesitate to talk to a therapist, counselor, or addiction specialist for guidance and support in implementing these practices. I conclude by saying by incorporating these healthy habits into your life alongside seeking professional help when needed, you can create a holistic approach to managing your well-being and building a thriving music career. Whitney Houston's legacy is complex and enduring. She is remembered as one of the greatest singers of all time, a powerful voice who redefined pop music. However, her struggles with addiction serve as a cautionary tale. So, that's um, what Chapter 3 of Unlocking Whitney Houston was about. Those were the points that I shared um, to assist you guys who are suffering with addiction steps to take, organic steps to take, what you can actually do and integrate into your life. But remember, do what works best for you. And I really hope that this can assist you. And if you want to talk about it more, if you just need someone to just be yours, you know, for a moment so you can explain your situation, how it got there and what led there, you're always welcome to hit me up, even if you're not within Johannesburg, South Africa, to personally come through and see me. You're more than welcome to still reach out to me. We are living in a in the digital era, and we can always do our discussions online. More than welcome to do so. And the thing about me, I became a consulting agency. Just the Bosch Mangosh Group overall. Even if you can't afford the full fee with us, you know we are always willing to negotiate. Um, no problem at all when it comes to that. I just want to see you guys overcome um, your addiction. If you're going on the spot and just live your best life as an independent artist or just someone general who's going through something at the moment and you just need professional help and you need that guidance in your life. So key points of this will be in the description. And of course, if you want to sign up for Unlocking Icons, you can just go via one of my links and sign up on this $5 a month. And as I said at the start of the show, a new unlocking will be coming out um, just over a week. So yeah, yeah. So it's normally like just the first week of each month. So I'm looking forward for that. And possibly sometime this week, say late this week, I will promote on who the next feature um, will be. And yeah, we'll just um, take it from there. So I really hope this uh, was insightful and you learned a lot from it. Um, you know, one of the first point I made here about, or at the start, was about influences in your life. You know, normally, um, a good 
percentage, say 99% of the time, you know, addiction is caused by the influences and people around us. And that's the starting point, guys. That is the starting point. Um, you need to take stock of your surroundings, the people who you allow in your inner circle. And if you know you're in a bad environment and there's bad influence around you, you just need to make that decision for yourself and just start bringing that lust down so you can live your best life um, and live your life for you and live a life with purpose and meaning. So that's a wrap. I'll catch you next week again. It's truly, really a pleasure being here with you. Peace out.